So I want to take it back to the people at home who may be watching this and now they've gone through a journey where they've understood the value of knowledge, people of knowledge. They want to now start seeking this knowledge. And you mentioned at the start that the, the advice that you'd give them is to have high aspiration and to come with sincerity, ikhlas. What about, and I know you've done many series and many lectures on this, and I'm sure people can search on our channel for lectures you've done in the past, but the methodology that someone should take in, or the practical methodology that someone can take in the 21st century to seek knowledge. You know, these questions, they're very beneficial, but sometimes it gives the impression to the listeners and it gives sometimes even to the person who's talking that, you know, I've reached the end. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, I've got knowledge. I've mastered it. And I'm now talking to you guys. This is how I did it. This is how you guys can do it. And that's not the case. I myself admit, and I put my hand up and I, I, can, I consider myself to be the most lowest of low when it comes to knowledge. I, mean, I, have, I haven't got much understanding of the deed. But I'm only mentioning what I read from the statements of the ulama, what they said in their work. So it's, it's not my personal okay. uh, way. It's not me. The scholars, they mention two things are required from a person when it comes to seeking knowledge. This is what the ulama say. The first thing they say is that the person has to have characteristics that the student needs to adorn himself with. There's mm -hmm. qualities that you have to have. Ikhlas, sabr. I mean, sabr. If, you if you're not patient, you're not going to attain knowledge. Whatever you're trying to do, if you don't have patience, you're not going to attain anything. Yani, there's hilm, forbearance. Yani, sidq fi talab al-ilm. Sidq means that the person knows or he, he when he does seek knowledge, he doesn't sh and he, he doesn't mix up seeking knowledge with other things. Knowledge knowledge is big. It's you have big. to give it your full attention, otherwise it's gonna be very difficult. Yeah. You so, can't uh, you can't, you know, yeah, I see what you mean. Those are some of the qualities that you need to come with. Okay. And also al-amal bil ilm, act upon what you learnt. Because Allah, this is this is uh, Allah's religion. When he sees that you've acted upon what he's given you, he's going to give you more. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also to, to take it yeah, bit by bit. This is uh, mm. If you try to acknowledge all at once, it will go all at once. Um, so these are the, some of the qualities that the person needs to adorn himself with. Now we go into uh, the characteristics or the manhajiyya to fitara bin al now the second part is the methodology to seek knowledge. Okay. And so this first one I mentioned, which is a characteristics that you should come with, is the one that a lot of us, I myself included, we, we kind of dismiss and we push to the side. And when we were thinking about seeking knowledge, we just want to jump into the books and the teacher tells me about Masail and, and that's not. It's like it's like that it reminds me of, you know, when people go to the gym. Yeah. And they say that your diet is such a big part of one's gym. But nobody cares about the diet. They just want to pump their weights and think this right. is it. This That's is it. it. SubhanAllah. It's like that. It's exact. SubhanAllah. It's so true. Yeah, it's so true. They say, they say um, that uh, a good out outcome in the gym is made in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. That's in the kitchen. It's what you eat. Sahih. So yeah, people don't want to take that step. And they feel like they come to... And again, when you come to the gym and you see Danny, a guy who's big and he's strong and he's got six packs on his ears, <laughs> you look at him and you start to think to yourself, that's how I want to be. Mm. So, so this is the guy, you know, I want to look like this. I, if you ask the guy, how long have you been? 40 years, 10 years, 5 so, years. So he worked, he took time. And he started at the small section. He started with the small 5 kg one. So. And then he made his way to the to the 30 kg or yani. I remember subhanAllah one time I was in the gym and I was doing like five kg. I was small, small stuff. Yeah. And a guy came in and he looked around and he was like, yeah, I don't want to sign up for this gym. I overheard. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want to sign up for this gym. <laughs> so it's gharib. The guy goes, no, what? excuse me, why, sir? He goes, my weights are not here. And his is so big. It's so <laughs> the gym hasn't even got it. The gym doesn't have it. Allah. So... But he started from somewhere. Yeah. You know, he started from somewhere. So the person has to understand that there is a methodology when it comes to seeking knowledge. Okay. You can't just open a book and read from the middle page or rip a page out and think, oh, Allahumma barik, I'm just going to read this one script that I have. That's how some people see it. You have to start from the mutun. The scholars, they say, man hurimal usula, hurimal usula. If you're prevented from the beginner books, the small books, 
you're prevented from the big books. Mm. I subhanAllah remember at one point in my life, some of the mashayikh and the ulama I met, some of them will go to book fairs, they'll go to makatib, and guess what they would buy? Small mutun books just to put in their wow. pockets. And today, subhanAllah, we think a student of knowledge is the one who's got a trolley and he's putting all the books inside the trolley and he's got a big maktaba. And it doesn't necessarily mean, it doesn't necessarily mean sure. that this person is a, a grounded student of knowledge. And he, yeah, it doesn't really show much. The best person you see, Wallahi, when you look at a student of knowledge and you see an alim, you realize the small things when you ask him and the big things when you ask him, he knows the same. Hmm. Like in some people, they talk about big things when you ask them basic stuff, he goes, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's, it shows that there's a big gap. And it does affect your, 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 your general knowledge. So start small. It's not a race. No one's running race. You don't, you don't have to start the path properly and make your way slowly. And also get a sheikh, a person of knowledge, a person who understands it. Um, and uh, don't know that you can't do it by yourself. I mean, seeking knowledge from a book, just merely a book, without a sheikh, is like giving a person a new driver, a key to just drive the car. You can't drive, he's going to kill himself. He's going to hit a wall, he's going to, you know. You, if you want to learn how to drive first, you have to take driving classes. And then you learn how the car works. This is a gear, okay, this is how it works, okay, good. This is the steering wheel. Okay, this is how it works. There's a clutch, there's a brake, there's acceleration, there's a mirror, the maneuver. But anyway, it's bit, bit by bit. Teach has to show you all of this. Yeah. If you just jump into the car and say, hey, everybody drives, I've got four legs, I've got four hands, I've got eyes, I've got ears, I can hear. It's the steering wheel. Is this what they grab? Okay, let me grab it. You want to know the signs of the road. You want to know how to go about issues. Same with knowledge. And I don't, I, it shocks me that people don't tend to understand that. Uh, they don't understand that. Same with almost every science I've told you to say, like, there's a lot of it. It's true. Yeah. I know. So, uh, you have to always try to I mean, take that methodology. The methodology, inshallah ta'ala, we've mentioned it in great details in, uh, yeah, in PDFs that I've, I've put together. Yeah. Uh, also videos that we've done. I think there's a series that we've done on this channel called Practical Steps to Seeking Knowledge. There's a few there's a few different playlists that we've got on Seeking Knowledge. I'm sure people can find that. Inshallah. I think um, uh, the other thing that just to add on what you mentioned about the road being long, there's a beautiful statement from Sheikh Al-Albani, which I'm sure you can say that um, how the path is, is long and we move across it so slowly, but the goal is not to reach the end of the path, it's to die upon it's it. To die upon um, and I think that's a very strong reminder for many people who might be struggling at this moment in time, trying to progress my studies. And even over the years of my life, subhanAllah, there were things I thought I would never be able to learn. Mm. I thought, this is, not, this is not for me. And uh, I came back to it and read about it, studied it, learned with the shuyukh, asked them questions. And finally, you know, became a bit good about it, a little bit good in it. And so don't ever belittle your own efforts. Yeah. And don't ever think to yourself that I can't do this. Yani, I can't struggle. That's it. It's good. You know, it's those. Yani, yeah. What I can say is that, for example, let's practical steps that people can understand. Okay. Like, for example, when you go to the gym and, uh, I don't know, this gym, people are going to think I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> gym buff, yeah. Yeah, the gym buff. Yeah, <laughs> I go to the gym and stuff like that. I wish. But when you go to the gym and your muscles hurt you and you go home that night and your muscles hurt you, to get up in the morning to go work, and to go in the next day to the gym again and work another part of your body. I need the mindset that you need to come with. Yeah. And just keep doing it. That's the same thing when it comes to Talib al You hit a wall, you think, oh, I can't do it, I can't, man. I'm not seeing any changes. Don't worry. Just go on, go on, keep doing it. One or two mas'ala a day, if you learn it, you memorize one or two ayahs of Quran, you go through, yani, if you don't have the shuyukh in your land, and it just, you know the Arabic language, go online, just take down, download, download the video, the audio, and listen to it. Any shkalat that comes, ask, seeing your brothers in you in the land, yeah, your brother, Sheikh Nurathimi said this, I listened to his salatatul usul, he said this, I don't understand what does he mean by it. Yeah. And uh, of course, I think what puts off a lot of people as well, 
is that they they feel like they can't see the progress on themselves so it kind of like it's, it makes them give up but it's one of those like anything really that because you're living it and you're seeing yourself day in day out you can't see the progress you made but it's like again to bring it back to the gym example let's use another example uh, alhamdulillah recently blessed us with a with a baby daughter Mashallah. people who saw the my daughter when she was born and then saw her six weeks later she's changed so much yeah. wow but to us we see it every day it doesn't look like the progress same with the guy in the gym if you see him three years apart you're like wow you've been putting some work in the gym but for him it's just every day he sees himself that he doesn't really realize that he's actually making a lot of progress and i think a lot of the people seeking knowledge would well, it kind of makes them give up they think i'm not getting anywhere but they actually are